Pitts set up a field goal that enabled the Packers to escape with a tie. This game marked a rocky start to the season, especially for guard Jerry Kramer. Lions tackle Alex Karras outplayed number 64 Kramer all day. You know, I had not one of my better days, unquestionably. And so I felt bad about it, and Coach Lombardi chewed my backside, so he let me know about it. And my son asked me about Alex Karras, and my wife asked me about Alex Karras, and my barber asked me about Alex Karras, so I'd had all the Karras I wanted. After I had published Instant Replay, I was at a dinner with Alex Karras. Alex was speaking, and I was speaking, and Alex got up in front of me, and he said, Jerry Kramer is the best guard in football. If you don't believe it, read his book. So the crowd got a giggle out of that. So I got up, and I said, geez, Alex, I, I appreciate the comment. Who read the book to you? Jerry Kramer was a vital part of the Packers' veteran nucleus. I am Jerry Kramer. I play right guard. I've been with Green Bay for the past 10 years. Certainly, we were aging. We were aware of that. But we still felt confident, I think, that we could play the game at a high level. By week six, the so-called tired old men of the Packers were tired of being called old men. We started out rather haphazardly the first few games of the season. And then there was a great attack upon us by the press media that we were all old, that we were over the hill. Being an old man inferred that you were not capable of doing the job, that you had passed your prime, that you were no longer a great football player, you were a has-been, you were a bunch of old men, and it inferred that we were not capable of playing well, and it made us angry. In New York, against the Giants, Bob Skronsky in his pregame speech got up and said, I'm tired as hell about being called an old man. He said, I'm up to here with it, and I think uh, everyone else on the club was too. Number 64, all-pro guard Jerry Kramer, leads Elijah Pitts around end. Only a desperate tackle by Spider Lockhart saves a Packer touchdown. Maybe there had been a little doubt before that. Maybe we were starting to wonder ourselves whether we were old men. And so getting angry and getting that emotion up again, getting intense about the game, and, and playing at that high level was satisfying. I think there was a sense of relief, a sense of joy, a sense of uh, accomplishment after that game. Yeah, we got it. We still got it, and we can do it, and we can turn it on when we need to get it done, so we're going to be fine. Jerry Kramer enjoyed playing football because of the friendships he shared with teammates like Fuzzy Thurston. All of the Packers formed a close-knit group. We had a little tradition of the boys' night out on Monday, and we'd go out and we'd talk about things and, and have a pop or two or three or four or something like that. Anything that was a problem amongst anybody on the team would be talked about. And we'd hash things out with a beer or two, and the more you drank, of course, the more you hashed. And so everything kind of came out on the table and, and uh, was kind of cleared up on those Monday night sessions. And we reduced the pressure a great deal, too. Lombardi liked a player that he could depend on. He liked a guy that would give him everything he had. He felt that a player with less than great ability who was giving him everything he had was preferable to a player with great ability who was giving him less than he had. Travis fumbled the ball a couple times in training camp, and Coach Lombardi gave him a ball, picked it up, and said, carry this with you wherever you go. If you go to bed, take it to bed. You go to the John, take it to John. You're in the shower, take it with you. He did have a saying, uh, the big push. And he, he said in training camp that year, all right, get yourself ready. We got a lot of work to do, and this is the beginning of the big push. Now, I want everything you got. I want every ounce of your energy. I want it all. So we would double our efforts or whatever we had left we would give to him and we'd get through the exhibition season and into the first game or so of the regular season and he'd say okay this is the beginning of the big push now i really want you guys to give me everything you got and we're starting right now this is a big push and then we're halfway through the season now okay we start the big push here this is the big push at the time it was 
Whoa, what, what, how much more can we take? How much more can we give you? Well, you've got it all. There isn't anything left. There isn't anything left to push with. We've already been big pushing all we got. That's the best one right there. That was the best one right there. On Monday nights, when we were out having a beer, Fuzzy would say, all right, boys, this is going to be the big push. This next drink is the big push. What are you doing out there? What the hell's going on out here? Everybody grabbing out there. Nobody tackling. Just grabbing, everybody. Grab, grab, grab. Coach wanted things done perfectly. You don't do things right once in a while. You do them right all the time. And so every play had to be executed perfectly. Come on, Fleming, get off the ball down the field. 67 was a very, very tough year for Coach Lombardi. It reminded me of a, a president of the United States who comes into office as a young man, and you can literally see him age as the months pass. He gets older, he gets grayer, he gets a little haggard, a little drawn. Coach Lombardi got that way during 1967. It looked like the season took a tremendous toll on him. Let's go now, a little life out here. Let's have a little life out here. We look like we're half dead out here. Let's move a little bit. He based his whole pregame speech on run to win. I believe it was St. Paul's epistle. I'm not in the habit of quoting the scripture or gospel, but I was groping, I think, at the time for something in order to give my club a little bit of a lift. And there is a quote from St. Paul. Don't you know that while all the runners in a stadium or in a race, only one wins the prize, so run to win. And he went on to expound on that and say that we play not just to be playing. We're here not just to be here. That's not enough in itself. We play to win. We run to win. The footing was so bad and the, and the hands were so cold and the receivers catching the ball was difficult. So one score could make a big difference. And that uh, score of rentals was uh, like a knife in the heart. We've really struggled offensively in the second half. On 10 series, on 31 plays, we gained a minus nine yards. So we were getting our tail kicked in the second half. I certainly had a little, little sinking feeling that maybe this was not to be. With 4.50 remaining, the Packers faced their biggest push of the season. The end zone was 68 yards away. The temperature was 16 below zero. I don't know if anyone knows what it is you find when you reach down inside for something and you have to make it happen. But certainly, we remembered July. We remembered the training camp, remembered the hard work, the sweat, the tears, the pain, the suffering, the whole package. We remembered that. And certainly Lombardi's ability to push us to our limits helped us in that situation because this was a situation that needed everything we had, each and every one of us. Star begins the count. Takes the snap. He's got the quarterback. thought he was going to get the ball. There isn't any question about that. Maybe Bart said it as we broke the huddle. He said to me, I'm going to keep the ball. Jerry Kramer made the most famous block in NFL history when he got down low and pushed number 75, Jethro Pugh, out of the way. Starr followed Kramer into the end zone. How about that? They ran the play, and Coach says, hey, way to go, Jerry, way to go. <laughs> When I think of my team, the Green Bay Packers, I think of that drive. I don't think of the final touchdown, the, the sneak. I think of the drive. I think of the 68 yards that team went in incredible conditions and how that team was able to reach down and find something that Coach Lombardi had given them and had given them over a long period of time from training camp, 
many, many, many sessions of mental toughness, of the perfectly disciplined will, of fatigue makes cowards of us all, of all those things that he spoke of for so many years. I think they were personified in that final drive. Everything we had done leading up to it would be meaningless if we lost. The coach had mentioned on Wednesday, prior to the Sunday Super Bowl, that this might be our last time together. And we looked at one another and, what is that about? I think I looked at Bart and I said, what do you think that means? I don't know, Jerry. It's going to only mean one thing. And so we kind of thought that maybe it meant that he was going to retire. The Packers might have been unfocused, but Jerry Kramer put things into perspective. At halftime, I said, let's play this 30 minutes for the old man. I said, look, we got 30 more minutes this year. I said, let's give it to the old man. Let's play the last 30 for the old man. Throughout the second half, the old man watched his old men methodically take apart the Raiders. There's that wonderful, wonderful picture of him looking at me, and it's uh, like mutual admiration. All the arguments, all the difficult times together, and all of his driving and demanding and everything had finally paid off for me, and I finally understood him, and there was that wonderful emotion passing between us. And he looks down, he says, let's head for the locker room, boys. He would expand your athletic talent, he would expand your abilities, and also he would expand your life and your horizons and what you could do and what you could be. And so he had a tremendous impact on me and on my life and still does today. There are standards that you live by. If you're going to do something, you don't do it right once in a while, you do it right all the time.